Okay, so in order to adjust the stability system, to turn on the stability system, um, to be able to access any of the gain functions, we're gonna do that through forward programming. So on the transmitter, in the case of the IX series radio, it's under model adjust. It's actually in the function list on the DX series radio. So you'll notice here, forward programming. So access forward programming, and the screen will pop up, and it's gonna look just like this on the DX series too. You're gonna to have two options, gyro settings and other settings. So for now, we're gonna to go to other settings. So one of the things that we feel is really important, you know, like we mentioned, if you got the 637T new out of the box, it's already factory reset to defaults. So everything's, you know, turned off and it's functioning like a basic six channel receiver. By the way, if you get this someplace else, like this receiver that we have in here, we've used this a bunch in various different aircraft. Who knows what settings are in it or was in it. Um, and unless you know that it came directly out of a box, I would highly suggest that you reset the model um, to factory reset. Uh, if you don't do this, you know, there's the chance that some of the settings that you're unaware of may be set and it may cause some conflict with what you're trying to do. Could even be dangerous. In this case, go to factory reset and press factory reset. It explains what factory reset does. Hit apply and then hit complete. And now your receiver is set to factory reset and we're ready to start programming. The next phase of setting up AS3X is called first time setup. Here's where we're gonna set your orientation and it's also where we're gonna set a channel to be able to adjust the gains with. So go to the gyro settings and you'll see it says first time setup. By the way, if we didn't reset the model or if the model hadn't been reset to factory defaults, this wouldn't show up. If for some reason you select this page and it doesn't show up, go back and reset your um, reset to factory settings. So click on first time setup. And of course it tells you to be sure that you've set your airplane up like we talked about just a few minutes ago. You know, have all your travel adjust, reversing and so on ready to go. And then we're going to set orientation. So it needs to set to start orientation. There are two options. One is automatic and the other is manual. So automatic, in order to do that, our engineers came up with this really slick way of going about doing this. So by the way, what orientation is, orientation calibrates the receiver so that it knows and understands its position relative to the aircraft. So it knows what roll, pitch, and yaw is. And in addition, it knows what direction that is. So that a right roll versus a left roll pitch up, down, right, and left. So this is critical. This is what establishes your gyro gain correction direction on all three axes. So let's go here where it says continue, which is the automatic process. So the first thing that we did, the model was level. You hit continue. Now it says hold the model down at 90 degrees. So it's important from this position that you tip the model down. Now, you know, 90 degrees, it doesn't need to be exactly 90 degrees. It can be 80 degrees, probably 75 and so on, but you need to get the nose down substantially. We found that people that did testing with this, you know, they tip the nose down 30 or 40 degrees and this doesn't take, you know, it doesn't calibrate correctly. So you do need to get the nose down, you know, fairly close to 90 degrees. When you're in that position, hit continue. And you'll notice that a graphic pops up on your screen and this is a representation of the airplane and this is a representation of the receiver. And indeed, the orientation that it's showing here visually has the antennas to the front, pins to the rear and the top, and that's exactly how it's installed in the airplane. So you know you're good to go. By the way, there's a manual um, way that you can do this as well. You select set orientation manually and you do this, except then you scroll through the positions until the graphic matches what you have. So, you know, use the automatic method, it works great. Um, if you wanna use the manual method, you can do that too. It's fairly simple. So the next step in first time setup, after we've done our orientation, we hit uh, continue, then this screen pops up. And as it says, gain channel selection. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit that, access that, and so gain channel. So 
What gain channel selection does is it allows you to um, assign a, a switch, which would be kind of abnormal, but generally a knob, a slider, or even one of the trimmer switches um, so that you can adjust the gain in flight. I'll tell you one of the most popular um, knobs that, or one of the most popular inputs that is used is this upper right hand knob. Uh, the reason for this is it's easy to get to. Um, the other reason is it's found on most radios. Most of our channel count radios, that's one of the first features that we have is a knob. I'm going to utilize that for now and I'll show you how it works. So under gain channel, which says here, I'm going to click that. And you know I could go through the list and select knob, but the radios have auto select. So I'm just going to rotate the knob and it says AUX3 because this knob is already programmed to auxiliary three. I'm going to hit OK and that's all there is to it. Now, the way that this is going to function is if I rotate this knob totally counterclockwise or what's commonly referred to as to the left, the gain is going to be off. If I rotate this knob all the way to the right, the gain is going to be at full gain. And when I say full gain, that is the maximum gain that is programmed values in the AS3X channel gains 